שבוע טוב, הגות ובוך. I'm going to tell story number 58 of the ship here about Shem Tov. This story is not about the Shem Tov by one of the, um, the sages that were closely involved with or related to the Shem Tov. Um, in this story, they just focus on this character, uh, Rav Yitzchak of Drahovich, the, the Yitzchak Drahoviceer, and they don't mention the Shem Tov. And yet, the story will become, will touch elements that are relevant. Rav Yitzchak, the Drahovicher, uh, that's how it's known in Yiddish, uh, was um, Magid Misharim, was uh, served as this position of the, the uh, scholar that gives the moralistic teachings in three different communities, in his community, Drahovich, the place where he lived in um, in Ostro, as well as the community of Orechov. Thus the story begins. Rav Yitzchak, the Rehovitcher, was accepted as Magid in the great and holy community of Orechov. And he was there for a few weeks. While he was there, there was a, a Jewish butcher that was uh, involved in a big debt with the um, tax collector for the uh, tax, the tax, tax in Yiddish, the tax that uh, the Jews were supposed to pay for producing or selling meat. While the tax collector was away doing his business, um, the wife of the tax collector saw in the ledger that this uh, Jewish butcher had a big debt and she went I guess with whomever was able to impose such authority to the house of the butcher and um, confiscated goods um, because of the lack of uh, payment of the debt including the bed linen the, um, the pillows um, and things from the, their uh, living room things that basically greatly uh, cause a great problem or uh, hassle for the butcher and the wife of the butcher upon seeing this brought to cry and went to Rav Yitzchok to complain. Rav Yitzchok listened to her and he sent a message to the wife of the tax collector ordering her that she must um, return all that she had confiscated. But this woman would not listen. So Rav Yitzchak sent her a severe warning and a curse. Since she refused to listen, the curse came into effect. This is when they would start telling us about the special connection this Rav has. Um, and uh, the tax collector had a little uh, baby who passed away. She, the, the woman turned away, turned, turned to the side and realizes that her baby had died. When the tax collector returned home, she told him the story and told him, you know, the new maggot that came to the town, he gave me a clala and the baby died. <sighs> Rabbi Yitzchok went to his house in the community of Ostro also called Ostraha, and he worked as Magid for Rav, Yo for, yeah, Rav Yosef Yospa of Ostro. Rav, Yo Rav Yosef Yospa was the um, community leader and the treasurer of the communities of uh, Volenia. And um, in his uh, in his uh, office in his uh, table, there were always uh, 10 Talmud HaChamim learning, among them was Rabbi Yitzchak. So Rabbi Yitzchak goes back to Ostro, where he worked with his, uh, for this uh, Rab, uh, Yosef Yospa, and the leaders of the community of Orechov sent um, cards, wagons, uh, with a message to invite him to become the uh, Magid Misharim to serve in the community of Horechov. 
Kim and his family like to, to move over. But the tax collector heard of this and he sent a message to Rav Yitzhak with the opposite of the request of the community leaders. He tells him, if you have not yet moved, stay where you are. And if you're on the way here, turn around and go back. If you arrive here, I will personally see that you get kicked out of this place. He really did not want Rav Yitzhak to be in his community. Rav Yitzhak answered with even harsher words. He said, I will come to the community when they bring me your Aaron, your, um, how do you call it, when, when the person dies, the coffin, when they bring me your coffin. Indeed, Rav Yitzhak took the, the cart with his whole family and moved to the city of Ostro. And as he's about to, uh, to Orechov, and as he's about to enter, enter Orechov, he sees that there is a cart with a coffin about to come out of the, of the city and cannot go through the arch of the city. Um, I guess it was too narrow, so they had to take off the coffin and pass carrying it on their shoulders in front of the road. Exactly the words Rabbi Yitzhak said. I will come in when they bring me your aron, your coffin. Family of this uh, tax collector was um, were very uh, wealthy and influential in Orechov, and they really had great resentment against Rabbi Yitzhak, but they did not dare say it openly at first. And then comes an expression from the Talmud. They bring up a expression in the Gemara in Sanhedrin, Daf Zayn Amut Aleph, folio 7, uh, page 1, page A. Hai Tirga de Mia, the Tsinora, the Birka de Mia, Keivan Rachba, the Rachba Rachba. It's like a uh, valve where water goes through and becomes wider and wider, and then it cannot go back. It closes, doesn't allow it to go back. It has grown into a torrential um, stream. And this refers to the feeling that this family had against the Rav, against Rav Yitzchak. And as it grew stronger and, and bigger, they could not take it back. So they influenced many people and they they really wanted to like get Rabbi Yitzhak out, but if anyone tried to cause damage to the Rav, it would fall upon that person if they could not do anything to him. I'm not talking about a physical but uh, spiritual protection that caused things to turn against the people who were against the Rav. They influenced people in, in high um, spheres it got to, they got to influence Rabbi Yitzchik Horowitz, who at the time was the Avbes Din of the community of Brody, an important city where Rav Gershon, the brother-in-law of the Bolshemtov, lived, and for a time the Bolshemtov lived in his youth. Uh, Rabbi Yitzchik Horowitz was later Rav of the community of Hamburg and one of the most important rabbinical personalities of the time. And he was brought into this machlokes, into this dispute against Yitzhak Verhovichov. And then they, they touched, they connect, contacted Rabbi Cheskel Landa, who at the time was Abbas Din of the community of Yampol. He later on will go to, um, um, to another big city in, in Europe. Um, he would be known by his main book, the Noda Yehuda. And even though the Noda Yehuda is known to have written a very sharp letter against the, the Hasidim, here he cites for the sake of this Rav that will later be um, known as uh, closely associated to, to the Baal Shem Tov. Rabbi Cheskalanda, the Noda Yehuda, addressed Rabbi Yitzchik Horowitz and asked him for the, the sake of, of heavens, Shem Shemaim, you must make shalom with him, must make peace with him. For Rav Yitzchak is an age ochla, is a fire that consumes. Thus he's expressing this power of this Rav, but also uh, the nature of uh, how, he, how he did things. 
So Rav Yitzchikl Horowitz stopped the opposition and made peace with him. Finally, an anecdote. Closing this series of things that Rav Yoel is telling the author of the book. Once there were davening uh, Mincharev doing the afternoon prayer in the big shul, and a, a thunder broke and a ray went, an electric ray went through the roof of the shul into the inside of the shul, and two people died. One was on the Kotel Mizrahi, in the eastern wall of the shul, and one was in the cross, there was in the entrance of the shul. The people of the city turned to Rabbi Yitzchak and told him, Rebbe, you have caused the death, they assuming that some something that had to do with the, with the rock of some people from Hashem's people, from some Jews, from Hashem's people, these are, you know. So the Rav explains and he said, the man who died in the eastern wall was because of the Mechlokes. He was one of the, the ones who opposed me and he received from Shemaim his, um, his sentence. But the one who was in the Prozdor, who was at the entrance of the Shul, during the davening, he was tossing, he was playing with three red coins. These coins of red gold were Zlatis, um, Polish um, uh, coins of the time of quite a high value. This man had uh, done a uh, false testimony in uh, the city of Brody, in front of a Abesdin, in order to expropriate these three coins. And during the davening, during the prayer, he was playing with them. So when the thunder, the, the, the ray broke through, it, the lightning broke through, it hit him. And they turned to the man in the floor, still with holding his uh, fist, the three red coins. This, Rav Yitzchok saw, not directly, but in the spiritual realms, and was able to tell them what was going on. Rabbi Yitzhak Drohovich is the father of Rabbi Hiel Michel of Zalachov, who would be a big chassid of the Bolshemto and of um, the um, Maggid of Nesrich, and the beginning of a Hasidic dynasty that exists until our days, whose last name is Rabinovich. As far as I've been able to find out, I don't have any uh, familiar relationship to them. But that's the, uh, the story of this uh, Rav Yitzchak of Drohovich. And the story ends here. Shavuot Tov, a good Tavok.